friends in our today's video we are going to be having another unique beautiful juicy online dating success love story of a ugandan lady based in scotland by the name of keke a single mother of one in her late 20s she found love on online dating apps after two days of joining i know right now you're like what bella two days how did she do it <laughs> we would like to know don't worry guys you will find out what are those tricks that she used to find love after two days of joining a dating app especially you ladies that have been for so long on online dating apps you are going to get lots of tips today so kk found love on online dating apps after two days of joining with a scottish guy his name is graham so guys i told you that this love story is another unique one because the couple will be telling their love story isn't that amazing guys <laughs> it's gonna be hot 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 but that's not all that makes this love story a unique one no guys the couple has got a very big age gap i think this is my second story to share here on my channel of a couple with a very big age gap so i'm talking to you ladies that are on online dating apps you have been receiving messages from older guys and sometimes you freak out and be like oh my god the guy is too old maybe i should give him a chance but what will people think of me no i'm not going to give him a chance <laughs> Or oh, some of you are more interested into looks and when you look at a guy you'll be like no 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 this is not what I'm looking for he is very shorter than me <laughs> he is very older than me how can I date an older guy <laughs> guys by watching this beautiful love story you will learn a lot and you'll get lots of answers from the questions that you have been asking yourself about dating an older guy and maybe it's gonna change the way you think about dating an older guy and about looks in general it is a lot guys that we are going to be learning from this beautiful success online love story so without wasting much of your time because it's gonna be a long story <laughs> let us jump into it right now so friends like i told you we already know kk is a ugandan lady but i told you is based in scotland it is good for us to know how she went to scotland <laughs> yeah i can't just come here and be like yeah she was in scotland then went to the dating apps found love here she is no <laughs> no guys we need to know a bit of her life background then come to know how she became a single mother of one because she is a single mother then after that tell us about her past love relationship experience if she had any then to the dating apps what was her experience on online dating apps till when she found the one and i know through her love story most of you will relate maybe the things kk went through in life you are going through them right now so our intention to share this love story is to encourage you as a single mother you as a woman who is not a single mother but you are searching for love to believe that it is possible to find love on online dating apps even kk in her situation was able to find love and she is very very happy as i am talking right now <laughs> So after listening to KK, we'll also get to listen to a bit of Graham's story before joining online dating apps, then after joining, finding KK, you know everything guys. So let us hear from KK first. Hi everyone, how are you all? Uh, my name is KK and I'm basically here to tell you guys about my success story, uh, my successful story. Uh, but before we get into that, I'm just going to give you a bit of background to get to know me and how I ended up here today, basically. Um, so I am Ugandan. I was born in Uganda and um, I came to the UK when I was about eight years old. I came with my mom and my sisters 
and um, we first arrived in London and then my sisters by then they were already grown in the sense of they're already 18 so um, they decided to stay in in London and then my mom and I we moved to Scotland in Glasgow and um, that's where I've been all these years nearly what 20 no not 20 more than 20 years now and um, my mom passed away sadly in 2007 I was about 15 years old and then obviously you know um, it was her that I lived with and um, my sisters being so far away um, they did come down for the funeral and everything and I never want to move away I do you know when you're a teenager your friends you know are basically they're practically your family so I didn't want that big change of um, moving my school and friends so I decided to stay in Glasgow but obviously um, the one person that I knew passing away in Glasgow obviously like I knew you know other aunties um and uncles and i had friends but my mom is the one that i was living with you know and she's my mom and losing her really really gave it brought like a a void it it, uh, it created a big hole a big gap in my heart and um one of my best friends at the time um she introduced me to clubbing right so I always knew that you know she goes clubbing because she had the type of mom who was so cool and my mom psh, yeah you're not going anywhere <laughs> so when once my mom passed away um, so now you know I was basically going wild my friend introduced me to clubbing and every weekend we were out clubbing we we'll go to school Monday to Friday and weekends I would go clubbing you guys and um, through clubbing and um, that's where I met my daughter's dad so yes you guys I have a daughter currently she's um, 11 years old going to turn 12 actually next month on the 8th of April <laughs> she will be turning 12 um, so yeah so i started going clubbing and that's where i met you know my first first ever boyfriend you guys i was 15 at the time you know i thought i was in love we met we clicked he was ugandan um and we just started to get to know each other and i think because obviously i was also looking for love i was missing that love so when he came into my life i felt like yeah i love this man you know um so i gave him my all i trusted him and you know all of that good stuff and um a year later into our relationship um i got pregnant so i got pregnant a month before my 17th birthday i got pregnant and you know um at first i didn't know obviously so i was a i was pregnant for a whole month but you know teenagers <laughs> I, I was just clapping that time so even missing my period it never clicked that where's your period my friend but anyway um after a month um i went to london to visit my sisters and then I, I remember going to um, one of my sister's friend's house and it's the wife that was like, mm, Keke, are you okay? You're always tired. Um, you, you know, like all the signs you're giving off are for like a pregnant woman. Are you pregnant? And I was like, say what now? Say what now? So anyway, we went, we bought a pregnancy test and it turns out that I was pregnant. So I came back to Glasgow I went to my GP, my doctor, I tested again with my doctor and it turned out that, you know, I was pregnant and um, my doctor obviously <clears throat> advised me to tell the person who was responsible and, um, you know, 
let them know that I'm gonna be a dad. So I broke the news to him and first he was joyed and then a few weeks later tables turned you know we weren't living we were not living together at the time he had his own place i had my own place and basically a lot changed for me like i grew up so quick my priorities changed my value the the, the things i was like my the way of thinking also changed i was more worried about my health um the things I put into my body, am I resting enough? You know, what am I doing to make sure that this baby grows healthy, you know, and I don't cause any harm to this baby. I was also in shock of becoming a young mom, you know, be becoming a young mom, telling my family that I'm pregnant and I was still in school. So all of that, um, I was beyond stressed I was beyond stressed and even him on his part you know I guess he was also beyond stressed and as time goes on we grew apart we really really grew apart because he was still drinking he was still clubbing um, KK can we go out clubbing can we go out and do this can we go out and do that and I was just not interested but not even being interested um now ladies for those who you know have experienced pregnancy your first trimester is like the hardest i was constantly tired i was throwing up all the time i didn't have the energy to now go to a club you know or to go to dinners and be at friends houses all day and and, and drink and watch people smoke and I wasn't living that life anymore and um, I remember also I had to break the news to my sisters which obviously they didn't take it too well and they didn't speak to me for a while uh, but eventually you know they came to their senses and they contacted me and they supported me throughout my entire pregnancy and but for my my daughter's dad at the time um we just called it quits because i guess he wasn't ready to be a dad and i was all about my daughter then everything that i was doing everything was just about me being healthy especially um there was one day where i went to the hospital because i was constantly tired and i was stressed beyond stress and I remember going to the my doctor and my doctor was like, you're anemic, you're very low. Um, you have a very low blood, like your blood is really, really low. And if it continues like this, you have a hard pregnancy. And on top of that, delivery is going to be a challenge because you need to stop stressing and you need to get your iron levels to, you know, like up there. So, um... I cut off a lot of people not in a bad way but people just didn't serve me anymore and um, I lost connections with my friends because you know they wanted to party and I was at home tired you know at home pregnant heavily pregnant now um, but me and my my daughter's dad we called it quits before I even get birth and once I gave birth, um, you know, he wanted to see his kid again. So he was back into our lives and I always had the mentality of I had a chance to grow up with my dad and my dad did everything that he could to make sure that he's in my life, you know, even until this very moment. So I always had it in my mind that whenever he was ready to come back into his child's life, I'll always leave that door open, you know, and um, when I gave birth, you know he reached out and he was like i want to see my child and i was like you know where we live anytime feel free but obviously he took that to his advantage 
that he would come literally 2 a.m., 3 a.m. and he'd be banging on my door how he wants to see his child. And I'm thinking, how are you going to see a sleeping baby at 2, 3 in the morning, you know? And um, so that went, went, it went on constantly, constantly. And I was just like, you know what? No, this is not my life. This is not going to be my life. This is not how I imagined my life. I'm cutting this man off so I, I completely cut him off and um, we actually moved so we moved to um, England to live with my sister for a while because I was like you know what I'm even tired of Glasgow maybe we need a change of environment if I'm closer to my sisters then I'll get more help with the baby and plus I was becoming a new mom so it, it was very you know daunting for me so we moved and when my daughter turned around three three four years um he contacted me and he was diagnosed with cancer and not even a month passed and he passed away um i came back to glasgow for the funeral and i didn't bring my daughter with me because obviously you know i didn't want her to go through that experience of seeing her dad on her deathbed yet she has never met him before and i didn't want that to be you know like the last images of her dad in her head so i didn't bring her along i just came my own um i went for the funeral and everything and then after that i went back to manchester and i remember thinking to myself Do you know what okay enough with relationships just concentrate on your daughter because even then i was terrified of bringing the wrong man into my life into my daughter's life in case you know my daughter was mistreated or anything like that so that terrified me and i just cut out love and i just concentrated on my daughter making sure i'm raising her right and i just wanted her to get to the point where she was independent she was old enough she could talk you know and i wasn't so much worried about her and then you know i would revisit you know that area in my life and so i missed glasgow we ended up moving back to glasgow and when my daughter turned nine that's when the questions began of who her dad is and blah 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 and um i knew those those questions would come and now and from the moment she was born i was literally like prepare, pre preparing myself for them so i did sit her down and i did you know talk to her about her dad who he was who he was and how much he loved her and i showed her pictures of him and um those questions were now you know out of her head until she also asked me mom why don't you have a boyfriend and i remember laughing so loud because i was like wait what <laughs> i just said mom you should have a boyfriend you should get a boyfriend don't feel like you can't have a relationship because of me and i remember looking at my child like Why did you hear all of this? What? But anyway, after her telling me that, I, you know, I sat down and I thought of it and I was like, you know what? I've not been in a relationship for a very long time. But yet again, I am not ready. You know, I'm not ready to give myself, um, to give myself to somebody. I'm not ready to be in that commitment because I'm the type of person that once I'm in a relationship, I want to give it a hundred to a hundred, you know, spending time together, doing things for that person, being about going above and beyond. And I didn't feel ready, but I accepted the idea of it. And I said, you know what? Okay. Let me, let me try again. Let me start again. But let me hope for a long distance because for well, a long distance it's not gonna stress me out a lot because the person is so far away we just need to talk on the phone 
and pretty much that's it and i can still give my all to my daughter um i had gone back to work i was working so i was basically just concentrating on work and my child and that's all the time that i had um and then obviously um my sister's my my sister's ex introduced me to you know um his cousin um and the cousin is ugandan obviously living in uganda we started talking and um every year i started traveling back to uganda you know obviously to see to meet him and things like that but i guess um we never had enough time together because i could only travel what once a year for two weeks in uganda obviously that's not enough for a relationship yeah so long story with that one um we grew apart we, we really grew apart um and it turned out that you know he was cheating and how i found out was um how i found out that he was cheating was basically <laughs> so my sister's ex um transferred from manchester to glasgow and he, he was working in glasgow and um so when he was working in glasgow he was staying with me and then on the weekends we would go back to manchester so obviously once we started growing apart um with his cousin and our communication was not the best and i would ask him all the time like you know what's up with your cousin he would be like oh he's just busy he's working and i felt like yeah no no that's not a good enough reason so what i did was one day when i was going to work i had a spare phone that i left on recording and basically it captured my sister's ex talking to his cousin and obviously they were talking about a girl that you know he was interested in and um how he was you know preparing to eat her goodies and all of these things <laughs> so once obviously you know i came back home i played the voice note and i had all of that and i was just like yeah see ya i'm not dealing with that nonsense bye and then it was from then i was like okay long distance relationships no i need somebody obviously closer you know somebody that i'm gonna get to know and um yeah and really start a life and even i started wanting more kids because my daughter also you know started asking me mom i want to have a sister i want to have a brother so i thought okay i need somebody closer so when my daughter turned 11 years old and i remember this so well when my daughter turned 11 um I did a birthday party for her. It was a TikTok themed birthday party. My sisters came down. I invited all of her friends from school. And it was on a Saturday. Actually, before even talking about, you know, like this particular app, I went I, I joined um Bumble a year before, right? I joined the Bumble a year before. And I met I, I matched with some, you know, some some guys and sometimes you know um, i'll have good conversation with a person thinking you know things are gonna work out and next minute they cost you they costed me um and i had a few of those so i was a bit like what is going on like how am i talking to these people the conversation is flowing and the next minute they're ghosted but most of them used to, like they will block me when i initiate um as meeting you know because for me when i decided to go on two dating apps i told myself that i was not looking for a pen pal so i didn't not want to speak to a guy for three weeks a whole month without meeting them i wanted to speak to a person to a man and meet straight away to be honest because sometimes you can have a very good conversation through messaging but once you meet the person then you're like no no you know so i didn't want all of that i didn't want to be pen pals i didn't want to message for so long 
so after a week or two i'll be like hi can we meet up and i think maybe that's scared of some some guys and that's why they ghosted me but anyway after a whole year on bumble i was like yeah I'm, I'm gonna give up on these dating apps these dating apps are not for me i'm just gonna end up um being alone you know and if god brings somebody my way then fantastic if it happens old-fashioned way where you're walking on the street and somebody approaches you or a friend of a friend you know uh, connects you or whatever i was giving up so when my daughter turned 11 and i remember this so well because her birthday her birthday party was on on, on a saturday i deleted bumble i deleted it and then sunday morning we're waking up i slept in her room and i remember waking up i sat on her bed and i was just like god am i that bad looking like what is going on you know i've told you everything that i want in a man i want a man that's gonna love me that's gonna take care of me that's gonna look after my daughter um, like as if they were their own and that is the one thing that was like first thing on my list I wanted somebody who was going to accept my daughter I was praying to God that if I do meet somebody that I'm really into that they have a good relationship with my daughter because if they didn't then obviously it's not gonna work out um, and when I joined Bumble also I had told myself like I had I had um, my qualities that I was looking for a man and if you didn't meet those, no, I was not willing to settle because I know I deserve, I deserve better, I deserve better so I was not willing to settle for anything less than what I knew I was looking for. So on that Sunday I sat down on the bed and there's times where like I'm stuck on something or I don't understand something and instead of praying to God I literally speak to God as if I was speaking to my dad you know you know when you when you're looking for advice from your dad and you're just like dad this and this is happening like what the hell what should I do that's how I literally talk to God at times and my and when my daughter catches me like that she's like mom why are you doing why are you talking to yourself I'm just like sorry I'm think my thoughts are you know thinking out loud but I did sit on the bed and I was like God am I that bad looking you know exactly what I am looking for I've told you this so many times like what's going on I've had a few successful stories um about you know online dating when is mine you know when when is my successful story gonna come I know your time is the perfect timing but I'm ready now. I am ready. I am ready, beyond ready. <laughs> and I remember, you know, like, you know sometimes when people say, God spoke to me, I always thought you, you hear a voice, but it's, it's, like a, it's like a feeling, or, or maybe even a voice within you. And I remember like, this voice or whatever was in me, told me try this up so guys i think you have had kk's experience on online dating apps and you can relate kk at some point got ghosted people are ghosting you right now <laughs> kk at some point could write messages to guys they couldn't respond you are experiencing that people offended her some men are just there on online dating apps to offend you, yes, I told you exist crazy, crazy people on online dating apps and at some point too, KK got blocked for no reason by these guys on online dating apps. You are going through that too. Also, KK felt like maybe it's because of the way she looks. Maybe she is ugly. She asked herself, maybe I am bad looking. I know you too right now, you are asking yourself same, same questions. Why is it not working? 
when will it be my turn when you see a success love story i'm telling you do not give up at all it's not your fault that guys are blocking you on online dating apps it's not that you are ugly no guys it's not yet god's time let us keep on pushing keep on searching i know with god you are going to find the one it worked for kk it's gonna work for you too now the app that you know my heart or oh god was telling me to try i've heard of that app before but i swore never to go on that app because that app people have always like people that i know that have been on that app they've already told me that um the guys send you their you know their nudes they're asking for nudes um none of them are serious men on that app only one one night stands and i was like yeah i'm never going on that and i remember thinking to myself yeah no i'm not going on that app but this feeling was so strong and i was like damn okay i'll go on the damn app so i downloaded the app and i was like and as it was downloaded i was like god you've told me to go on this app but i am giving myself one week one week if one week is complete and i've not matched with anyone and i'm and i'm not talking to like anyone i feel like yeah this is going somewhere i'm leaving this app and i'm never gonna go back on online dating so i downloaded the app i set up my profile and um i put on you know a few photos and i made sure that i was putting on photos where i don't have makeup because i wanted this person to come into my life and accept me for me i didn't have makeup on i was just myself obviously nice photos you know <laughs> you have to make sure you look good you know to some standard um but i'm not a makeup person anyway so yeah so i put on a few photos and in my bio i wrote everything that i was looking for in a person in, in a man and um the type of person that i was and also you guys uh, my daughter and i actually have a youtube channel called t and kk so i put that on there as well so that this person can come on my profile look at exactly what i was looking for and um and also be able to access our youtube channel and also get to know that i have a daughter and she's my priority and obviously that was also a way of showing this person that if you're gonna come into our lives you're going to have to be okay with you know social media i mean it wasn't like a big issue if they never wanted to be on youtube that's completely fine but as long as you knew that we did that and you were gonna accept it because i didn't want anybody coming into our life and then telling us no you can't do youtube anymore you know you stop recording videos and no um so my my bio you know i just put i'm looking for a man who's caring who's trustworthy and somebody that you know um is honest and um, i'm looking to love and to love somebody and also be loved and you know um, i have a daughter so i i explained all of that so guys i want to add something here about your profile please please guys work on your profile your photos are very very important stop putting passport size photos they will never help you you know unfortunately these days photos works so so much a guy looks at your photos first so when they come across your profile what will attract them first is your photo put some good words in your bio talk about yourself be clear of what you're looking for into a man create that curiosity in a guy that is reading your profile you know to be like i want to get to know this lady <laughs> write you a message so that he can get to know you due to the curiosity that you created in your bio that's how to be clever guys <laughs> so that's the secret to succeed on online dating apps so on sunday 
I matched with a few people, but the messages, no, nah. it was just hi, hi, how are you, how are you? You know those messages where you feel like you're forcing somebody to type? Monday came around, I matched again with a few people, nothing, I wasn't vibing. And then Tuesday came around and I remember seeing this profile and I was like, wow, he's handsome. And then I looked at the age and I was like, damn, he's older. He's way older. I've never been with an older man before. Like, how is that going to work out? But I don't know, like something in me just said, swipe right. So I swiped right. And the minute I swiped right, we matched. And I was like, oh my God, we matched. Oh no, what if he messages me, then what am I going to do? I don't think I'm okay with this age gap. And what happened? He messaged me. He messaged me. And I replied, you know, he was like, hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm well. Um, I didn't expect you to, you know, match with me. And I was just like, yeah, <laughs> to be fair, neither did I. <laughs> but anyway, you guys, um, we started, you know, talking. The conversation was flowing. And I was just like, wow, he's a really great guy, you know and um wednesday came around and he asked for my number and i was like well oh, well he's moving fast i think i like that so i gave him my number because he oh and the message as well like he messaged me saying hi kk i'm sorry if i'm being too forward but is it okay if um we swap numbers because i find it easier you know to speak on whatsapp and i was like yeah makes sense um because i wasn't paying for the app as well so i was like okay it makes sense so i you know i sent him my number and we moved on to whatsapp and once we moved on to whatsapp um the conversation just kept on going and ladies the minute we transferred to whatsapp like i asked questions i wasn't afraid to do that i asked him um what he was looking for why did he join um, online dating um what qualities was he looking in, was he looking for in a woman exactly what kind of relationship was he looking for because some guys go onto these online dating apps and all they want is one night stands they want pen pals um, they want something casual so i really needed to know and it turns out that me asking all of this only proved to him that I was serious so as I was asking these questions he was asking me those questions as well and I was you know telling him my honest answers that I'm looking for a serious relationship I'm not here to play games so if that's what you're interested in then I'm not the girl for you and um, I have a daughter so obviously and that's one of the reasons why I'm looking for somebody you know who's stable and things like that and um third no wednesday so wednesday so we speak we you know message back and forth and then around night time he asks me and it's like um any chance you're free at the weekend we go out on, on a day like we meet and i was like yeah yeah i am free on saturday yeah definitely let's meet because at the end of the day i don't want to be talking to you for so long only to meet in person and not like you or we don't you know connect in person so um so guys so that app i downloaded it on sunday um monday tuesday so two days later we matched um tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday four days later we met and you guys so he asked me, do you want me to come and pick you up from your house? Um, oh, by the way, the other thing that really, really caught my eye, I like a guy who's really, who's, who's, um, I like a man who takes charge. 
and this man took charge from the beginning because when he asked me out on Saturday, he asked me, is there any way you want to go or like a type of food that you want to eat? And I was like, you know what, anywhere suits me. And he was like, leave it to me. I'll get back to you with all the details. And I was like, okay, okay, I like this, I like this. So by Thursday, he messaged me and he was like, oh, this is where we're going to meet. I booked um, a table for us at this time. Is that okay with you? And I was like, yeah, that's completely fine. And he offered to pick me up and I was like, no, it's okay. You know, I'll make my way there. And he's like, okay, cool. And Saturday came round, you know, I was like, okay, I need to dress to impress. I need to dress to impress just in case if I reach there and we connect and we vibe, I need to dress to impress. <laughs> so I dressed to impress you guys and i booked my taxi my taxi came and um it dropped me off and as it, the uh, driver dropped me off as i opened the door i saw obviously a guy's hand opening my door so in my mind i'm like oh my god this is him and i remember looking up like okay he looks good ever he's on the short side <laughs> So I was like, oh no, he's hired. Oh, honestly, God can't give you everything. But I was like, you know what? No, let's go in. So I said hi to him. He introduced himself and um, he led the way to the restaurant. And you guys, we spoke the whole night. Our reservation was at eight o'clock we didn't leave that restaurant until midnight we were literally the last people we closed the restaurant <laughs> hi good evening guys uh my name's uh graham uh and i'm just here to just to explain and, and give you some insight into what my experience at online dating has been but before i start this story uh there, there's there's some sad stuff around it there's some stuff to be said but uh I don't want this to sound like a spoiler, but uh, this has a happy ending, okay? It has a happy ending. But uh, I've been married a couple of times, been married a couple of times in the past, uh, which unfortunately didn't work out. Uh, and I'm also been very, very career focused. And uh, that was a lot of the problems, I suppose, was just really working constantly, working day in, day out, and working weekends, and perhaps maybe not having enough time for each other. And uh, when my relationships ended, uh, I did, uh, I kind of dabbled, put, uh, dabbled a little bit in uh, online dating. Uh, I've done it a couple of times over the past few years. Uh, with some limited success, I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, but when my relationship ended, or when my last really long-term relationship ended, I really, really put in, I, I turned all my attention to work and my career and, and building a career, and uh, consequently didn't have really much time for myself, if you like, and certainly didn't have much of a social life. And then I decided that, you know, life can't be all work and no play and I certainly didn't have a great work-life balance. So I did join a couple of dating sites. I joined Match.com uh, and I actually joined Tinder as well too. Now I have to be honest and say that I was relatively successful in the sense that uh, I seemed to get a few dates. Uh, I seemed to be able to sort of attract uh, ladies and uh, I met quite a few actually over you know the space I don't know maybe 12 to 18 months where I was kind of dipping in and out of it uh, what what I liked or what I liked about it was that actually uh, I met a lot of really nice people I met a lot of really friendly people. Uh, I can't say that it, it worked out particularly uh, in every case, but I did date a few ladies a few times. Uh, we spoke for so long. We asked each other questions about everything to what our favorite food was, to the color, our favorite color. We asked each other about everything, everywhere we've traveled, everything we've ever done what was on our bucket lists um 
he told me about his kids i told him about tia and honestly we just had an amazing 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 time and i and i remember thinking to myself like wow this guy ticks all my boxes the only boxes he doesn't tick is the age the age gap and also the height so i was a bit like uh. so anyway um after that so now the restaurant is closing we're the last people you know i'm like okay i think we need to leave these guys wanna go home um so we left he ordered a taxi and before we left he asked me whether i wanted to go to his house and i remember thinking mm, okay what a way to end the night and he was like no 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 don't think about it the wrong way I know what you're thinking and that is not why I'm asking you to come to my house I literally just want to show you where I live and, and that's it you can just be there for two seconds and then you will leave and I remember thinking yeah that's what they all say come for two seconds and then next minute you know he, he wants to kiss you and and I kept on saying no 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 but he kept on insisting <laughs> So I laughed so hard when she was talking about going to his house. I think she thought maybe this guy is one of those one night stand. Once only the goodies. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So anyway, he brought me over to his house. He just gave me a house tour and then he ordered me a taxi and I left. And I was like, okay. So I went back home. So obviously right now it's like 1 a.m. It's so late at night. So in the morning I called my sisters and I was like, guys, I met somebody. Um, I didn't tell them the age thing. I just told them, you know, um, you know, the height. He's shorter than me. I don't think I'm okay with that. And I remember my sisters telling me like, okay, does it tick all your boxes? Like everything you want in a man is that him. I'm like, yeah, then height shouldn't matter. Everybody's not perfect. You're not going to find somebody who's perfect. Even you yourself, you're not perfect. And I was like, you know what? That's true. And let me give this man a chance. So, so guys, with age gap and looks, I know some of you, it's not that maybe you are scared to date an older guy. No. It's because you think of what other people are going to say when they see me with a guy who is older than me. <laughs> but you find that a guy has got all qualities of a man that you are looking for. But you get scared and be like, mm, people are going to laugh at me. Guys, what I'm telling you, if you are in a relationship right now, maybe you're chatting with a guy who is older than you, but you see he is very good to you. He has got all that you are looking for in a man. Do not think of others. I know I've spent a lot of time telling you that you come first you are number one so if you are happy if you think a guy has got everything all boxes tick 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 why should you think of others because it's not those people that are going to get married to that man that they say he is old it's you girl it's all about your life do not care about others would they bring a good guy who is young and has got all boxes tick 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 to you no they will not if it is what you are looking for go for it when we talk of looks it's the same guys i don't know you but for me guys i don't care about looks and when i was connected to my husband what I looked more, more, more deep into was the way he was treating me. Was the peaceful I found in him that I didn't find in any other guy that I dated. Even the guys that were same, same age as me or maybe two years older than me that I dated in the past. So after that, you guys, every single day we went out, we went out every single day we were going out lunches dinners like this man was spoiling me rotten 
he took me out shopping i bought my first ever designer bag and shoes and i was just living my best life and honestly i thank god for this man and as time went on um he asked actually i think it was like two months into our relationship he asked me to move in with him and i was like wait i think you know we are moving a little bit too fast um let's slow down when it comes to that i mean i've not met your family you've not met my family so let's just slow down with that um and then my sister was coming down because my daughter had a show for her school it was a, a, a summer show for her theater school and my sisters was coming down so i invited him as well so that obviously after the show they could also meet and um before my sister came down to meet him that's when i was like um he, he's a bit older <laughs> and they were like what do you mean and i was like he's a older man how old um 20 years older and i'm like kk can we see some photos and i send them photos the minute they saw his photos you guys the response that i got was wow he's a nice man he looks good he doesn't look you know his age um take it go for it and in my mind i remember thinking what you're okay with it they're like yeah he's a nice person i'm like but you just seen him in the like on the in the photos you've not even met him and they're like no and just from his photos he's given us a good aura perfect we have no issues <laughs> and i remember thinking oh wow okay um so my sister came down she met him or she loves him um you guys graham is god's timing is the perfect timing this man is amazing this man loves the hell out of me this man loves my daughter so after um he met my sister then he met my daughter as well and obviously the first day that he, he, they met he brought her a little present and um and they clicked straight away they clicked i think they even played they, there's a game that they played together and my daughter loves him you know they connected so well and i remember thinking thank you god thank you god you are amazing thank you because this is one of the things that you know i was so worried about but they are the same people they are the same the same jokes the same funny little skits they do like heaven <laughs> honestly you guys heaven um so so basically on 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 this dating app i was on it for not even a week you know i am i matched with graham two days into creating the account we met four days after um speaking or, or matching and ever since then it has just been amazing this man is sent from god there's nothing this man won't do for my daughter and i um i've met his boys as well and his boys are lovely they are literally just happy for him they, they didn't mind the edge gap as long as their dad is happy they're happy um i've met his sister his sister is just amazing um so both families have welcomed each other the the they've both welcomed us um with open arms which is amazing and um so after all of this you know the talks of moving in moving in with him also came back but i kept on pushing it to the side because 
I didn't want to rush things at the same time. So friends, we can't have a love story without Afro cinema. <laughs> now we go to Afro cinema. <laughs> So friends, Keke tells us this Afro cinema happened in June, which is last year, and it was a very important day. <laughs> it was the celebration in the UK of the late Queen Elizabeth II's Jubilee, 70 years of her reign. To get the juicy part of this Afro cinema, let us hear it from Keke. <laughs> we had an Afro cinema. <laughs> So our first ever opera cinema was um, Diana Ross was performing and I was like wow this woman looks amazing by the way how old is she and he must have said like she's in her 60s or something and and I was like wow she looks really really good and I remember him saying yeah I am also 60 and I was like, what? Okay, you know, I just brushed it off. And he's like, no, Keke, I'm 60. I'm actually 65. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was confused. And he's like, I'm sorry, but I'm actually 65 years old. I am not 55, I'm 65. And I was like, what? So why did you lie? Why did you lie about your age? And then he was like, well, um, when we matched, I saw you, like already that was his age on the profile. But when we matched, he wanted to tell me, but he was scared to tell me because he felt like I would reject him because of that, you know? But him seeing that the relationship was becoming serious he had to tell me you know and i was upset i was really upset because this is the first time i'm finding out that he's lied to me so i was really upset and i was like you know what nah i don't like people lying to me take me home so he took me home and remember, he, mis he sent me a long message apologizing, saying that he was sorry. He never meant to hurt me, but he was just scared that I might not accept him. And I was like, well, we would never know now because you didn't give me that chance, you know. And now you're 30 years or 35 years even older than me. Like, I don't know how I feel about that, but give me a few days to process everything and bless him which he did he gave me a few days to process and to be honest by that time i was head over heels <laughs> so i called him back and i was like look it's okay you know it's fine um it is just a number let's just see where things will take us so guys i know right now some of you are like what she forgave him why <laughs> guys from this afro cinema we learn something yes we see yes graham lied to her but he did not wait till he engaged her he did not wait till he married her to tell her about the truth, about his real age. He told her in the early stages of their relationship, when he saw that this relationship is very, very serious, she loves me and I love her very, very much, it's time to tell her the truth. Something that unserious men don't do that. A guy who has got bad, bad intentions with you will date you, will propose to you, will get married to you, you will have kids and then discover the truth later where you don't have a choice. You don't have an option to turn back and be like, no, I can't continue because you will be already in his trap. But it is very, very different with Graham's situation. He is a serious guy. He is not a chronic liar. That's why he apologized. So this was around July. And then August, that's my birthday month, 
I was born on the 30th of August and you guys this man came to me and he was like KK for your birthday I want to take you to Dubai I don't remember like going like what where do where Dubai oh my god this was my first time ever in Dubai I always wanted to go to Dubai so we ended up I ended up going to Dubai um, I sent Tia to my sisters and you guys this man paid for everything ever since I've met Graham I've not had to lift a finger to pay for anything anything even when I'm working and he knows that I'm working you know and I thank God for that um, because he's caring he's generous he's very generous he's a very caring man so long story short you guys this man takes me to Dubai for my birthday I'd had a fabulous fabulous time um, we went to the Burj Khalifa we went to um, uh, what's that restaurant uh, we went to Aura Pool Sky Pool um, oh, we went to a lot of places it was amazing and then when we came back my daughter by the way her name is Tia I don't know if I mentioned that she was like you guys left me and you went to Dubai <laughs> so when um, the October holidays came around this man again surprised us to a holiday to Morocco and this time we went all together as a family so me him and Tia we went to Morocco we had a fabulous 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 time you guys and a blessing he's been a blessing and you guys also I told you that um, we do YouTube you know me and my daughter have been doing YouTube for two years now if I'm remembering correctly and recently Graham has also joined us on our channel so now he's part of the channel you know so yes yeah, so our family has grown on YouTube because it's no longer the two of us now it's the three of us and um, he's joined us on there as well and it has been amazing um, having to you know capture him in our memories it's been beautiful you guys so my advice to women on um, on dating apps is know your worth make sure your standards are high and don't lower them for any man be upfront on your profile with what you're looking for and don't budge you know don't don't swipe with a man and let a man put a different idea in your mind about something no the qualities that you look for make sure those are the qualities that you get because um god's timing honestly is the perfect time and don't ever feel like oh my god if i don't you know go with this person or or continue with this person i might miss out no you're not gonna miss out there's somebody for all of us do you know what i mean there's somebody that god has created for each and every one of us so take your time ladies don't let a man rush you everything works out in its own perfect timing you know um and yeah you guys so now my journey to being engaged <laughs> you guys we have not even been a year together we will make a year in april yeah we'll make a year in april so next month that's what we're gonna make a year but we've done all of this in less than one year so my journey to getting engaged was basically um on christmas so we, we spent christmas in my house and um i remember i decorated the place we all took part because obviously it's a family affair and we create memories and these are things that graham never did in the past was celebrate christmas or even decorate a christmas tree so we um i cooked on christmas day he brought over his presents i had presents under the tree and you guys this man 
surprised me with this I remember opening the box thinking oh my god he's got me jewelry yeah and it ended up to be an engagement ring and um, so that so last year Christmas obviously it was just him me my daughter and a few friends and my sisters were not there so I was like babe you need to do it right you need to do it again because I want my family to be around and you guys this man surprised me again on the 7th of March um, he contacted my sister and my sisters came down from England and this man proposed again on the 7th of March yes it was amazing um, a day I will never forget so with all that said right all that remains for me to do is say would you would you make me the, the happiest and, and proudest man in the world tonight <laughs> Would you, would you please marry me, darling? Let's <laughs> be oh, Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh my God, that was, that was the longest 20 seconds of my life. <laughs> Round of applause for our please. Thank you so much. <laughs> and obviously, after his numerous requests of us moving in with him, we also finally moved in last month. Yeah, we finally moved in last month, you guys. So right now, we are on the journey of... Um, before the year ends, we are on the journey of him traveling with us to Uganda. We're actually going to Uganda um, in a few days time, but he's not coming with us because of work commitments. But at the end of the, uh, before the end of the year, he's gonna come with us so he can get to meet my uh, family on my dad's side. And obviously um, get married. <laughs> Um, yeah, because I want my dad to also, you know, be part of the ceremony and things like that. Because we could have done it here um, in Scotland, but I want to do it in Uganda. And he wants to travel to Uganda. He wants to, you know, um, see my family there, my culture. And um, he wants to stay there for a few months. So, yeah, you guys. Um, yeah, come on this journey with us. So guys, to the part that most of you like, you already know the goodies. <laughs> did KK share her goodies the first date? Or where did she share her goodies in her relationship? <laughs> Let's find out guys and she's going to be the one telling us how it happened. <laughs> when did she share her goodies? <laughs> Oh yeah, and then um, <laughs> guys, I'm sorry, I'm I'm a little bit shy, but uh, to also touch on the goodies. So our first time um, having the goodies or eating the goodies. <laughs> so guys, we didn't eat the goodies until three months. Three months, and if it was up to Graham, it would have even been within the week of us meeting but i kept on refusing and telling him that i was not ready and he was such a gentleman you know um for waiting for so long even though he used to have certain days where he's like okay, okay come on and do, 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 do. and i'll be like no i am not ready and i don't want to be rushed into something that i'm not ready i still want to get to know you without the pressure of the bedroom so let's first get to know ourselves and then you know that will happen so after three months of us meeting i voiced it to him that you know i was ready and obviously the romantic that he is 
um, this man booked out a luxury ship in Edinburgh for a weekend and that's where we spent the weekend eating the goodies <laughs> oh god yeah so we ate the goodies after three months of us um, basically dating we took it quite slowly, KK and I, and uh, as I said, we went on holiday together. And then when we came back, uh, you know, we had a good chat about the future. And as I said, we share a lot of values. We've got the same morals and uh, we want the same things in life. I think I said earlier on, we've got a really, really good relationship. It's, uh, it's I feel it's really, really solid. She's very, very wise. KK, she's wise beyond her years, uh, beyond her years, beyond her years, uh, and I think you know, and she's quite single-minded about what she wants and how she wants to get there. And uh, I must admit, I quite like that. I like somebody who's decisive, and uh, but she's also very warm. She's very caring, and uh, she's got a really, really good heart, and she's very kind, and she's very, very generous. And then, as if. I wasn't the luckiest man on earth having that in, uh, in my girlfriend. Uh, when we came back from holiday and we decided it was because our relationship was, our foundations were solid, that it would be a good idea to go in there and meet uh, Tia, her daughter, who's 11 years old. And as I said in the earlier video, I had some trepidation around that. I was a little bit frightened about that. Uh, a little bit scared about how I would actually handle that, about what she'd think of me and all the rest of it. I mean, both my sons are growing up and I've kind of got that adult relationship with them. But I'd never had experience, if you like, of how you deal with uh, an 11-year-old girl. But, you know, Tia made that so easy for me because she's so open and she's so honest. And, you know, she's got such energy, like, you couldn't believe... And if I'm being absolutely honest, we, 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 we bought into each other big time and, you know, we, we like to dance together, we like to make videos together, I'm coming to talk about that in a minute as well too. We go to the gym together, we swim uh, together and we tease each other endlessly, right? I mean, it really is, it's a bit of a battle of will sometimes to see who can come out with the best one-liner. But we have so much fun together and it's actually the privilege of my life to have her because uh, she's, she's so easy going and she's so good to get on with and I feel really, really proud. I, I sometimes run out of school and I sometimes pick her up and I always feel proud and I'm always looking forward to when she gets out of the school and see that big smiling face and then she normally says, where are we going to eat? So, uh, so now I've got a really, really good relationship with her and long, long may that continue, you know? So it seemed natural that the right thing to do was uh, for the girls to move in with me. So they've moved in about a month ago and uh, to be honest, uh, it's turned my life completely upside down. Uh, and I've never met two more untidy girls. But apart from that, it's absolutely wonderful, right? I mean, I kind of walk around uh, skipping over women's clothes that are thrown all over. But uh, no, it's been really good. And they've, they invited me to join the KK squad or in their social media family. And uh, for somebody my age who's not really used to social media, I actually find out that I'm an absolute natural at it, okay? So we're having great fun with that. And we're actually hoping to build up our subscribers as well too. So all in all, uh, online dating has been the most fabulous experience for me. As I said earlier on, I've met the girl of my dreams and she comes complete with a mini me, right? And uh, we have a great relationship, the three of us together. Uh, we've got some plans for the future. I'd really like to go and see Uganda. I'd actually like to go and spend some time in Uganda. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm close to thinking about giving up work soon, actually, right? Uh, and we have some plans about what we'd like to do maybe in Uganda, but I'm very, very anxious to go and see it, maybe spend three months or so out there uh, just to get a feel for what it's like, the culture, etc., and see if we can put our plans into place. So, yeah, life's turned completely upside down uh, in the last few weeks, but for the better. And uh, I wish everybody finds the same happiness as me. Graham is heaven sent. 
like I feel like God just dropped an angel straight down from heaven for me and the surprising thing is you guys that we always talk about is how close we live or where okay because now I live with him so how close we lived together like my old house was so close to his house and we were even shopping in the same um, supermarket but we had never met can you believe this so when we matched and I got to know where he lives and he got to know where I live we were like how come we never met honestly it's all God it's all good. I remember one day I sat here and I told you guys that on online dating apps, whether you are in Europe, America, Australia, Africa, I don't know, in the Philippines, in the Caribbean, in the dating apps, if you're interested especially in an interracial relationship, interracial dating, it's the only place that have got potential a very very great potential to find your mr right yes we see they were going in the same supermarket but never met <laughs> and even if they met in person let's say in that mall they couldn't have talked to each other <laughs> yes <laughs> it's kind of difficult you know when it comes to the real world especially when the lady is black and the guy is white or coming from a different race it's very very different I want to talk to you about something that you have been complaining a lot concerning online dating apps you say that most dating apps have got big number of older guys yes of course men who are mature are the ones that are really struggling you know to find the right woman compared to younger guys that is why you see the number of older guys is higher and the young ones is not all that much because a young guy doesn't have lots of challenges to find the one in real life compared to older guys but attention not all older guys are good not all older guys are like graham so you have to be clever you have to be intelligent to differentiate a serious guy and a guy who is not serious because some older guys are even immature <laughs> yes you have come across them if you are on online dating apps not just because bella said older guys are good you see graham and then you guys go start chatting with any <laughs> older guy or start looking for an older guy without looking the qualities that you are searching for in a man that you want to be your husband ladies graham is amazing i don't know how much i can stress that i've found my my soulmate <laughs> i can't even say that i found i found my soulmate god literally <laughs> gave me my soulmate and yes my soulmate is 30 plus years older than me but that's the man that understands me and i understand him and i honestly thank god for this man ladies i recently got um yeah i'm not gonna cry but um recently i just got um diagnosed um with a disease called keratoconus and that affects um, my cornea in my eye so my cornea is not normal anyway i've explained a lot of this on my youtube channel so i'm not gonna sudden you all with it but all i can tell you is that this man has been by my side all the way through it all from the moment i got the news to to even now to speak to seeing the specialist that we were um, transferred to the cost of the surgery is it's costly but he just keeps telling me it's gonna be okay i am here for you we're gonna do everything for you to make sure 
your vision doesn't deteriorate. So basically with keratoconus, your vision deteriorates. But I don't know where, what I would have done or where I would have been if I was to get this news when I was all by myself, honestly. So I thank God that I have somebody with me. My daughter's obviously with me as well. But it's nice to have, you know, a partner. Um, honestly, I've been blessed by God. I have no problem with God. <laughs> my problem before with God was, where's my husband? Where's my husband? God, where is my husband? Now I don't have any problem with God. God, I don't have any problems with you. <laughs> but anyway, you guys, um... And that's my story thanks for watching bye so guys i totally agree with kk graham is such a good man god bless you keep being a good man <laughs> to our lovely sister kk and her daughter tia <laughs> bless you bless you bless you so guys i know you like this couple already <laughs> And if I don't tell you this, I know you'll come in the comment section and be like, Bella, don't they have Instagram? Bella, don't they have a YouTube channel? Guys, KK has talked about this already, but I want to let you all know that KK is a content creator too. Yes, her YouTube channel name goes by the name of Tia and KK. She does very, very nice videos that you will all enjoy. And recently, Graham has joined them in their squad, which is very, very interesting. So please go follow our sister, support our Ugandan sister, KK and her family <laughs> by subscribing to their YouTube channel, which goes by, I repeat, Tia and KK. Thank you so much. Be blessed. They're also on Instagram. I'm going to be sharing Instagram account name here so that you can follow them too on Instagram. You who was wondering if they've got an Instagram account. So to the big question, I know some of you must have guessed <laughs> the name of the dating app where this couple met. It's our famous online dating app called <laughs> Tinder. <laughs> yeah, everyone is like, no, Tinder is trash. Even last time I received a comment, someone saying Tinder is just trash. Yes, guys, I know. <laughs> Tinder has got a very big number of guys who play games. But if you go with your eyes wide open, who knows, you might find the one on Tinder just like KK. Give it a try for three months. Maybe it's going to work. If it doesn't, you can try other dating apps. But KK and Graham met on Tinder. So dear friends, God bless you so much for your time. I really appreciate. Give this video a thumbs up. If you have liked it, share it with your friends, family, everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something. Comment below what you think about this video. I would like to know. <laughs> please, please subscribe join the family thank you for subscribing watch my other videos too they are super good you will learn a lot until next time guys i love you so much you're always here in my heart ciao ciao Mwah.